What is up, you beautiful humans? Today we're giving the Sharpie 1 a coat of olive drab. I always disassemble the model for easier painting. It's just there's not much to be disassembled on this particular one, but I felt obligated to mention that. Also, before I even start, this is my plan. I'm going to paint this model as Free French Forces tank operating in 1944. It was painted in US olive drab with hand painted markings. So I first need to figure out how I'm going to spray the model without actually touching it. I have several clothespins laying around just for this occasion. I just have to add a piece of blue tack and stick the model to the clothespin. Boom! You can be creative with your model handle thing choice, just don't use any valuables because, well, because, just don't. The commander's cupola is too small, so I just put it on another piece of blue tack. Also look at how small and cute it is. It's cute pola. Okay, so I have two primers and I don't really care which one I'm gonna use. What I do know is that I want to prime the model with airbrush, so I need to somehow transfer the primer from the can into the airbrush. Behold the most inefficient way imaginable. Okay, yeah, so I'm um, also adding a few drops of lacquer thinner, so I can spray it in several light coats. As you might have noticed in the previous series, I like to prime the entire model, not just the metal or other parts. Painting will be also easier and paints should hold a bit stronger, so I don't see any reason why you shouldn't prime the entire model. It's good for you. Now I'm gonna make my life easier by spraying gloss black into hard to reach parts of the model. This is a cool hack if the idea of spraying the camouflage color while doing airbrush gymnastics doesn't appeal to you. If you don't reach these parts later, the black will serve as a fake shadow. So I'm gonna test the new AK real colors for the first time. You should keep in mind that accurate paints usually don't work on scale models, because the result will be simply too dark. The model reflects less light than the real vehicle and all that stuff, you might probably heard about it at some point in your life, but the point is, it is just a base coat, okay? Having a historically accurate base coat is actually a very good thing, because you now have an accurate starting point, so woohoo! Next I will use the faded version of this paint. Although I'm covering most of the surface, I'm still spraying it in much thinner layers, so the underlying paint can peek out here and there. Now I'm gonna add Tamiya XF60 Dark Yellow into the faded olive drab. It's one of the paints you can choose to fade the paint even further. Olive drab used to fade into yellowish or grayish tones. I will use both, but I'm starting with the yellowish one, so I can tone it down later. Check out how I'm spraying it, it's like a cloudy pattern thing, it's very random. This is a technique often used by aircraft modelers. So 
So let's now add XF19 Sky Gray into the paint. The airbrush in your face is completely intentional to show you how close it is to the model. I'm keeping the air pressure quite low so I won't lose control over the paint flow. I don't really know the numbers because I'm not really a number guy, but it's very low. And I'm again spraying it in a cloudy and wavy patterns, but also the amount of paint is much smaller so I won't cover the previous steps. Okay, time to put the airbrush aside and get some life color acrylics. I will mix two light olive drab tones by adding dust paint to them. Dust from life color is more like deck tan, which is a great color for making all sorts of stuff lighter. And I can start picking out details by brush. I'm painting larger details with darker colors, so they won't stand out too much. This is a fun and easy technique that will make the model more interesting in a subtle way. Smaller details like bolts and rivets are painted with the lighter color. And now for the markings. Because I have no decals for this tank, I don't even know if they actually exist, I need to sketch the letters first with a pencil. I'm constantly checking my reference photos to replicate them as accurately as I possibly can, which is not much, but hey. Ok, I made a mistake with this one, so I quickly erased it with enamel thinner. Oh yeah, that's right, enamel thinner dissolves graphite. And then I sketched them again. So let's now turn the sketch into a painting. I will use incinerated white from life color because it's a nice off-white. Ah, who am I kidding? <laughs> I just don't have a normal white. This is mainly about being patient, relaxed and confident. It would be hard to fix a mistake now, so I'm starting with thin lines just following the sketched letters. When that was a success, I went over the lines again with more paint, constantly checking the reference photos so the lines would have correct thickness and everything. I'm personally not good enough to exactly replicate this kind of stuff, but for me it's good enough. So when all of this was done, I again used enamel thinner to erase the remaining graphite. Who needs decals anyway? Reference photos show that the white paint was worn from the rivets, so I repainted them with the light olive drab I used before to pick them out. And to tie everything together, I sprayed the entire model with Tamiya X22 Clear. Working with enamel washes and oil paints will be now much easier, but I also think the surface now looks more like painted metal, because, if you know, old paints for metal surfaces were usually glossy, yeah. So yes, the model is painted. I think it's quite an unusual paint scheme, and one that I actually wanted to make for quite some time now. This free French forces, blah, 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 free French forces, yeah. These free French forces tanks are right up my alley, and they actually had a Samua, which I coincidentally have in 35th scale. So maybe one day. I'm also quite pleased with these new colors from AK. Thanks so much to my friend who borrowed them to me. You know who you are, my dude. And also. 
I don't know if this is too early to make shoutouts, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Shout out to my another dude Carlos Mendes, who is also a YouTube modeler and he made a free French force Sharp B1 in 35th scale a few years ago and it was thanks to him that I learned about these things, like that they actually existed. Anyhow, next week I'll be applying some oil paints and some enamel washes and boy this thing was made for washes. So if you want to see that you should subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you mates in the next one. Thanks for watching.